I became interested in volunteering after completing the Leadership Victoria program, which I call how to become a community leader. I don't remember what they call it. Uh, so then through the Victoria Foundation, I was referred to Ballet Victoria, where I volunteered, uh, uh, still slightly involved but not as busy as I was before, developing their seniors programs, uh, managing their volunteers, organizing front of house. And that was a new arts experience for me because I'd never done anything in the arts before. And because Ballet Victoria works with the symphony, then I became interested in the symphony after hearing them and I thought I need to know more about that. So I applied to the symphony and said, here I am, what can I do for you? And they needed a merchandise coordinator to, uh, for their front of house sales to get the chocolate bars and the tea and the raffle tickets to the theatre, away from the theatre, keep the records, that kind of thing. I'm a prostate cancer survivor. The urologist that was treating me, Dr. Gary Steinhoff, he recommended that my wife and I go to the Island Prostate Centre for some counselling. I got very good advice from the Prostate Centre. And as it turned out, there was an opportunity to join the Board of Directors of the Island Prostate Centre. So I took advantage of that opportunity and joined the Board. I also increased my donations to the Prostate Centre and started a six-year journey on the Board of Directors. It started out as an awareness journey, but we decided that the mission for the project would be very simple, and that was to raise awareness and inspire hope for families living with ALS. We've been incredibly lucky with this project. Uh, we started just as two women starting a project here in Victoria. From that, we spread out over to the mainland. Uh, we've experienced and, and really been able to touch some families there to also join us in this journey all the way to Toronto. So, I mean, we've been able to go national on this one and it all started right here in Victoria with the help and support of our community and, and we can't thank people here enough. The Zonta Club of Victoria is part of Zonta International. It's a global service organization that has the mission to advance the status of women worldwide. And we do that through service and advocacy. So here in Victoria, our club has been going strong since 1968. We've worked with local organizations to build towards that goal of global equality for women and girls. And through our work with uh, the Pearson College, it's actually had a ripple effect. And sometimes when you get frustrated and you're thinking, are we getting anywhere? All you have to do is talk to these students and you realize you are making a difference. I'm humbled to be here today recognizing the organization of Sandwich Baptist and be nominated by the Victoria Women's Transition House for this award. Today we realize that they really are the Young Zong Heroes. It's organizations like them that are offering aid and support to the marginalized and the oppressed here in the Victoria area. And we, if we can partner with them and help them in ways that allows them to have more free time to support their clients, if it means by uh, restructuring gardens, doing a little construction, uh, making cabinets, doing cleanup, painting, and even offering a little financial support, then it makes our day that much better. And you know, it makes what we do worthwhile because we know that organizations like the Victoria Women's Transition House and other aid organizations all over Victoria really need that support. And so that's what we do as a church. And 10 years ago, we started an event called Serve the City. And on Serve the City Days, we call it our church of a congregation of over 700 to go out and support local organizations all over town. PECSEF is unique because it was started in 1965 by government employees who really wanted to make a difference in their local communities. And over 50 years later, we're still around. And to date, over 45 million has been raised by those BC public servants. And that's something that I know I'm really proud to represent. We actually create pools of local programs that BC Public Servants can choose to donate to if uh, there isn't one specific organization that they're really feeling strong about. Those organizations apply for funding on a three-year cycle, and once approved, we vet them on an annual basis. So when donors are choosing to support that fund-supported pool, they feel confident in the fact that the funds are staying locally and there actually is a big impact on their local communities.
We are pleased to have been named for this award thanks to our place. We've worked closely with them in the past few years. Uh, Stantec is about to celebrate its fourth uh, Stantec in the Community Day. As a company, uh, they support staff for getting out in the community and giving back for part of a day every year in September. We have been able to combine and work with uh, organizations such as Our Place and United Way in finding local organizations that need some help. I think people know about a lot of the big events, but what they don't know about are the dozens and dozens and scores of events that you wouldn't associate the Times Colonist with. We sponsor a ton of stuff. You go in your closet and you can be just about certain that you're going to have a t-shirt with the Times Colonist logo on it somewhere. I would agree with that. The, uh, the TC on an annual basis puts about $3 million into the community in terms of no charge lineage and cash to support uh, causes big and small. About 150 charitable organizations every year receive lineage from the Times Colonist to help promote their event. Thank you ads to their sponsors, uh, ads before their event to actually drive ticket sales and put bums in seats. We uh, thank the Times Colonist readers because they're great at uh, taking instruction and actually registering for these events and coming out to support the uh, great charities in Victoria. Maximus Canada is the presenting partner, founder and organizer of the Urban City Challenge. The Urban City Challenge is a downtown adventure race here in Victoria, BC, and all proceeds go to benefit the Island Prostate Centre. Now our competitors, our racers, uh, they fundraise to, to, to raise money for our charity and to help encourage them and kind of motivate them to do the best they can. Uh, a few years ago we introduced a uh, fundraising incentives component. So a team that does better in fundraising can do better in the race. The more they fundraise, the more incentives they can get. So we've tried to mesh these two together to make a holistic event. Um, as we say, your first challenge isn't on the race day, your first challenge is fundraising. And once you've kind of met that challenge, you'll be well placed to tackle the challenges on a race day. And I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes about a year ago. So far, I have raised about $2,200 for this cause. I raised it by collecting bottles and going door to door asking for donations. I have helped out JDRF by participating in their gala fundraiser. I was also a youth ambassador for their TELUS walk for a cure. My team of, of about 15 people all came out to support JDRF. I really hope that one day they find a cure for type 1 diabetes. I want to thank you for my nomination. Hi, my name is Olivia. I go to South Park Family School. Last year we did a coin drive and we donated to the SPCA, the Children's Hospital, and Syrian refugees. The Children's Hospital helps kids from all over BC and it has doctors and machines special for children. And a girl I met a few years ago is there getting a treatment for cancer because her home hospital isn't able to. So I donated beds and furniture to Syrian refugees and we met a Syrian family and donated like baseball gloves and stuff and we taught them how to play baseball and how we're friends. I'm from Edward Mill Community School. I'm in the leadership class, and we really focus on building our community. We do some events like the Spinathon, the 10,000 Tonight, and our Hannah Day Festival. We start with our Spinathon event, and that consists of riding a bike, an indoor bike, for 12 hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And that's raising money for the Canadian for the Canadian Cancer Society. We also had a bottle drive where we raised about $1,300 and um, we also helped a local girl named Hannah Day raise money for her family and her needs because she has cancer. I chose to raise money for the Search and Rescue Society of BC because I really like climbing and outdoor activities and so I really wanted to do something for them. So I did some research and just looked into it and they have a lifesaver program. 
So they have wristbands for children and adults with autism and diseases where they tend to wander. And so I really just wanted to help them. I raised money by doing a raffle. And so I just stood out of thrifties with my friends and we, we just got talked to people and raised awareness about the Search and Rescue Society of BC. I've been sort of connected with the museum for a long time, like about 30 years perhaps. Um, I was president of the Friends twice, with 10 years between the two terms, so that makes quite a long time. I've donated to them every year for a very long time too, and I guess maybe that's why they have nominated me for this award. Um, I reorganized the Friends when I was there and uh, they were not a very viable organization and then they ended up being so and things have progressed from there. Uh, but I haven't had anything active to do with them for years. Apart from that though, I've been involved in community service of one sort or another since I was 14. It's something which I hope more people will start to do because we need volunteers in all sorts of areas. When I moved to Victoria, I asked a colleague to help me find a charity where I could in fact contribute and volunteer. I wanted to uh, give back to the community, uh, particularly this wonderful community where I was now beginning to live. Um, she introduced me to the Canadian College of Performing Arts. Uh, this is a private, nonprofit, national college that trains students who come from across Canada and in fact come from international destinations. I truly felt like I was in heaven when I found this group and had the opportunity to work with an extraordinary board, really committed volunteers, and of course these high energy, talented, magnificent students. At this college, I've been the board chair for two years and I've been on the board for six years. It's a college where you can do anything and contribute everywhere. And if you have the passion for the arts and the organization as I do, um, it's a pleasure to be part of it. Team for Hope is a nonprofit society that raises money for research in helping families with neuroblastoma. We're a fundraising team that is a running team and we raise money through different events that we hold both here in Victoria and in Saskatchewan where we have a chapter. Our events here in Victoria are Handbags for Hope, which is a, a night out for the ladies that come and go shopping and we have over 700 different handbags that they come for. And then our other event is Touch a Truck, which is a family event out at Panorama Rec Center which comes out and kids get to climb and honk the horn and have fun at Touch a Truck. 